Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner. Once a week I pick some topic of interest in C++ and dig into it with some live coding. In this episode I am continuing the series on new features in C++ 17 with nested namespaces. Now it's entirely possible this episode will be very short and could possibly just make a simple example, but it's still one that I'd like to talk about and I'm kind of having fun talking about new upcoming C++ 17 features. So currently, in our highly organized C++ code, we might have something like this. Now, this is, you know, maybe a bit convoluted, but it's not unusual to see three or four levels of nested namespaces. And then you end up with arguments in your organization about, well, you know, how do we keep these things organized? Should there be exactly one level of indent for all namespaces? And I've seen coding standards that are, you know, something like this, which I can see, but I don't really like personally because it doesn't play very well with my editor because my editor keeps wanting to automatically re-indent everything for me. If I say re-indent, that's what it wants to do. And so, you know, what do we do about this? We just end up with some ugliness. And I'm going to be testing this compile with Clang um, 3.8 and Visual Studio, excuse me, and C++ 17 mode, 1Z in this case. And of course that compiles, there's nothing to it. So what C++ 17 just agreed on, and it's a feature that we will be seeing coming in our compilers, and probably most of them already have it, or many of them do is that we will be allowed to now specify nested namespaces all at once. And I love this because now this plays nicely with my editor and I don't have to question my coding standards or anything. It might seem like a minor thing, but it's also a nice little handy thing. And compiles nice and fast, whatever, we wouldn't expect any difference there. But so this is nested namespaces, which is coming in C++ 17. And that went so quickly, I'm going to go ahead and throw in a little bonus mention to the new standard library feature, standard clamp. Now, this might look incredibly straightforward. We just have a function called clamp that takes a value and a low value and a high value. And what it does is it ensures that the first value passed in falls between low and high. And you can pass in your own comparator if you were so inclined. If the value compares less than high, then it returns the larger of v and low. Otherwise, it returns the smaller of v and high. So I don't know how many times I've implemented my own code. That might be something like this. If argc is less than 2, then I want to return 2 else if argc is greater than 5 then I want to return 5 else I want to return argc and this kind of thing you end up well possibly implementing as a ternary condition nested it gets all ugly and difficult to keep track of and you probably somewhere along the lines did something and correct in your logic. And this kind of thing comes up a lot when you're doing like graphics programming, you want to make sure something is within the bounds of a certain box or whatever, or a clipping of data that you've been given. So standard clamp, pretty darn straightforward. I just want to see out standard clamp of argc between two and five. just like that. But for this example, we have to use the latest version of Clang. I believe Clang 3.9 has it. And on my system, I have Clang 3.8 is the latest. So I have my version that I built from Git.
and I have to use libc++ because it's not implemented in GCC standard library that normally ships with Ubuntu. And there we go. It works. It clamped the value between 2 and 5. Let's see if I put a bunch of argc arguments, then it clamps it to 5. So another little handy utility to look forward to in C++17. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.